Recorded live at Tox and Tasting Studios, it's the Clerical Errors Podcast. The podcast that shows you what's behind the collar. Let's go. From the Tox and Tasting Studios, I'm Bull Hagen. I'm Vicar. And I'm Jace. Jace is back. Yep, yep, I'm back. It's good, good to have you with yeah, us today. It's good to be back too. Yeah, it's awesome. It's been yeah. like uh, like almost a year now. I mean, with the weather, like you mm-hmm. know, when you go through winter, last summer it seems like right you know, now it's starting to get nice out. So right, I, I think uh, it was like in July or something yep. like last yep. year. End of July, I believe so. Yeah. So if you if you listen, uh, if if you go back to our uh, July, there is an episode called Bro Talk with Jace. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know why I call it bro talk? The, it was it was semi gym, uh, you know, oriented. <laughs> right, so. right. And you're kind of a bro. Oh yeah, you oh, yeah. lean into that. I'd, I'd say, <laughs> I'd say I lean into the bro side of things. Yeah. And uh, and uh, have you met Vicar by the way? Um, just just, just in the gym. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. by maybe maybe three times this year now. Yeah, like I'm at saying, least it's, it's a very yep. gym oriented um, friendship. You know. <laughs> As well as like you know, we're all all for the Lord, you know, praise the Lord. Yeah, there you go, there you go. Thanks, and yeah. uh, there's it's uh, there there is a kind of connection between a gym and a church in this way. Yeah, is uh, if if people who are regular, there is kind of a a gym culture that's supportive. Yeah, definitely. You I know, agree. you got the you got the guys who like don't want to look at each other and, uh-huh. and like zoned in and like puff themselves out when they see you. I got a little bit of that in me sometimes. Yeah. Oh yeah. We, I think we all do. And like, it, it also comes with like, uh, just how great it makes you feel phys- physically and mentally. Mm-hmm. But then it's also, uh, especially with like the small town, we have like the small town vibes going, mm-hmm. you know, we, we're all right. for the Lord and like the gym, I feel like it, it almost, we call, I call it the freak factory. Yeah. The freak factory for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have any stringers yet. You know, you might have to loan me one. Oh right? yeah. I'll hook you up. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So how's your workout been going? Good? Um, it's been going great. Yeah, I'm actually sore today. So um, this week was um, a bigger week than most of them that I've been having. You know, I've been like slowing down a little bit over the winter. Mm-hmm. Um, I landscape. So uh, this is actually my first winter I've actually taken off for the seasonal. Sure. You know, this, the break when the ground freezes and whatnot. But um, so like I was taking it a little bit slower, focusing more on like a diet and like at least trying to maintain because you know how it goes. Like, yeah. It kind of it's kind of awful seeing stuff go. So like or like, you know, but um. See, when yeah, you're week, my age, like uh-huh. what what sets in is like if I let it go, it, it may not come back. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and that's what that's what the fear already. But I mean, yeah, so, yeah. You caught me on uh, this, uh, Sunday afternoon bench day or leg day, and then bench day yesterday. Yep, yep, yeah. yeah and keeping with it too, yeah. doing legs at your age too. I can only imagine. Like I struggle doing legs at 25. So yeah, like I I, I joke with the guy at the the wellness center who, who, who runs it, the new guy. Uh-huh. I said. Whenever you, you know, it's leg day for me when I'm by myself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Man. Yeah, that is true. I see you guys doing a lot of. Right. Which is, you'll, have I, a, you'll have a pack on arm day for sure. Right. You're like you'll have a crew with right. you on arm day and chest day. No, I, but, I, uh, I got the two place on 35. I don't know if you saw that yesterday yep, on bench. I did. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to go I kind of want to get back at the free, yeah. 315 soon, you know. 315, yeah. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to tear a peck or something like that. I have, believe it or not, I've done 315 once before. Really? Yeah, I was 177 pounds and I picked wow. up 315. I was with like a, uh, I started working out for like three months with one of my like bigger friends. He was like, you know, 230 and mm-hmm. then he got up to like 240. So like I was like, you know, one, 180, but then I got down to like a cut, like 177, just like it wouldn't move, you know, the needle wouldn't move, but like right. I felt like very strong, you know, and, and I got three plates like once just cause like we were, we we're attacking it. Like we didn't, we didn't move up slow you know we went plates and then we went to 215 i think right away after plates mm-hmm. and then we just i think there might have been like a 275 in there but yeah i think that's honestly the the key to like the bigger bench presses is just like kind of warm up but warm up quick you know yeah like just get to it progressive overload yeah exactly exactly yep. you know what i'm talking vickers new to the game last yep. year he, he likes it though he he's oh he, yeah he got 225 now Really? That's a, really? I told him everyone remembers their first. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 225. When you hear, when you hear the weights clink on each side, right? that's what's awesome. <laughs> and only the plates do that. You know, you get the clinkage and you're like, yep, that's a 225 that I'm holding over top of my chest right now. I better pick this up. You know? yep. It's but a cool feeling. It, it is. is. It yeah. is. It's awesome. Yeah. He, he, he this, because he's lifted some before, but mm-hmm. not, 
in a consistent way where all the, where it gets in your head. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Where like not like now where if I miss a day I'm oh. doing push-ups at home cuz I'm afraid it yeah. I'm gonna lose so much. <laughs> it's like I feel like there's like that point that you just like it's like you snap almost and then it's like I need the gym. Like it's like that feeling. Right. It's awesome though. That's it's like, like the a, best point to get they to. say hangry when you you're hungry and you need to you get upset. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've always heard it like you're an iron addict. You right. Know? You're just an iron addict now. You're gym angry because you need to. <laughs> yeah. My wife knows that too. She'll say, you know, you need to go. Oh yeah. I can feel it too. Yeah. My showers aren't nearly as good. Like the days that I skip, you know? Yeah. Like, but like when I'm like a full week, all six days, you know, like then I, then I can take like a nice meaningful shower, you know? Yeah. Otherwise I feel like, you know, like you get, you get shower thoughts ever. Oh yeah. And like, you're just standing there and that's like, that's when it'll really affect me. I'll be like, dude, I need to go to the gym. It's been a day, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Shower thoughts. That should be a segment. Shower thoughts. Shower thoughts with Jace. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll swing by every. So uh, you grab something from the uh, talks and tasting fridge. What do you got there? I did. I got uh, this. I got a Sprite here. It's a, one of them seven point five mil fluid ounces. You know, we've I've had this argument with people. For some reason, it always tastes better in the small cans. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what is it, Vicar? What's your? I think you guys said it before that you know it's not going to last, right? It's so you sip special. It? Yeah. I uh, I had that same concept because I, like, I like Red Bull from time to time, right? Sure. And uh, they have the little ones, like the little bullet-sized ones. And I feel like those ones, they they almost like, they even kick a little bit more because, I don't know, I feel like maybe it's the packaging. Like they're trying to give you like this smaller, like their mm -hmm. best their best little vial of it to try and then you'll be like hooked <laughs> to it and then you'll want to go buy the big one, you know? But like, so they give you the, I feel like the, the small ones are the best formula, you know? like Right. Like, that's their formula batch. It's like over in a separate like tin in their in their warehouse that they make the sprite, and then it's like these ones go out in the seven point five. It's, it's like McDonald's Coke. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> well, I've just got coffee today. Just I've got some uh, to the usual. some Lacroix here. Lacroix. I was honestly thinking when I was uh, I rode here on the on the longboard, mm -hmm. and I was thinking I was going to ask you for a Lacroix because I think you're the only guy that I know that drinks Lacroix. <laughs> Honestly, but it's an old I'm, man. I'm thing. not a I'm not a big fan of Lacroix, but I did I did remember that that was your drink though. <laughs> yeah. So uh, w one thing we do at the beginning of the show is uh, um, we talk about what I'm going to be preaching on, okay. and I don't always have my sermon ready. But what we do is we have what's called a lectionary, which means throughout the year the readings are are already selected and they're it's a it's seasonal so. Kind of like how in Christmas you read the Christmas story, right? On yeah, Easter, you'll, yeah. you hear the resurrection of Jesus. Well, this is like every Sunday is already planned out. Okay. So there's a rhythm. Yeah, yeah. I think we kind of sort of went into this uh, last time we spoke. So like, yeah, and, um, it's got like, so it's March 15th now, like March 15th of last year or whatever around that, isn't mm -hmm. it? Wasn't it Right, similar? right. And is so that... um, uh, so this year we're in the, this time of year, we're in the season of Lent. Okay. So, so oh. there are... Six Sundays before Easter in preparation. Forty for days, Easter. correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because because Jesus uh, was tempted in the wilderness for forty days, mm -hmm. fasting, tempted in the wilderness, and and so in a sense we kind of mirror that. And what's interesting about Lent, um, I'm not sure how familiar you are with kind of more of a liturgical church and the church year type aspect, but there there is a rhythm to it. So so Lent, you think about. Um, our battle with sin. Mm -hmm. We think of of uh, of uh, the fight of good and evil within us. Yeah. Right. Yep. And so, for example, the first Sunday two weeks ago of Lent was Jesus in the wilderness being tempted by the devil. Yeah. And how all the various ways the devil tried to tempt Jesus, and how we overcame it uh, with the truth, with His Word. Um, last Sunday, uh, it was uh, in much the same way. It wasn't uh, the devil tempting Jesus. Rather, there was a woman whose daughter was possessed by a demon. Okay, okay. And uh, and she comes to Jesus and says, "Jesus, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on me." And and he kind of makes her ask a few times. Finally, he he says, "Okay." And and his, her daughter, the the spirit was driven out. And then the third one, we have another kind of a of a. Uh, that sets up this pattern is is another demon being driven out, and uh, um, do you you ever uh, th think about like because the the theme of our our Lent is 
you know, uh, like the Jesus battling the devil, and then the next Jesus driving out the demon of of her of her daughter, and then this we have Jesus n- driving out a demon. Else, is that something you think about or wrestle with a little bit to think of the the spiritual warfare that goes on? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that because like you you almost you almost like experience it in certain things, especially when you get older and you start noticing like um, objects that, like like that maybe even like in a sense, like it could be a temptation of like, um, um, ple- pleasurable, um, mm-hmm. earthly pr- pleasurable mm-hmm. things, you know? And like, you can like, it's been things like that, that have showed me that that could be like, uh, the devil tempting you in certain ways, even like with like simple things like junk foods, you know, or like snacking, you know, I feel like that could even be like, in a sense, like demons or like the devil trying to drag you into a certain mind state to, or like to, to eventually get you vulnerable mm-hmm. enough to, you know, yeah. be attacked, you know? And yeah. Well, ultimately, and I think as we, this text, Vicar, can you read the, like the first verse? Yeah. Now Jesus was casting out a demon that was mute. When the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke and the people marveled. So, so when we talk about the, the demon that had possessed this yeah. man, it, it sought damage. It, it kept that was, him from speaking. Right. Right. And and as Jesus kind of goes through this, um, um, he always had his attractors, right? Yeah. You know, uh, he always dealt with people who didn't believe him, didn't trust him, mm-hmm. and thought he was a threat in some way. And that happens here. And so basically they say to him, um, well, you're driving out these demons on behalf of uh, Beelzebul or the devil, so mm-hmm. they're saying that 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 Jesus, you are kind of the devil. But one thing it shows here, though, even at the very beginning, about when he drives out the demon of this mute is mm-hmm. is um, the devil and sin has has kind of a different definite will for us. Oh yeah, it, it seeks to to drive us away from God. It seeks to to um, Get us to question him and his goodness, uh, to to be lost in a sense, and to to uh, grab our hearts and our attentions, and uh, and to to really harm us. And I think, um, um, I mean, and I think it's always good to remember that we we just think of sin just as being just a right or a wrong, but uh, but there is a definite plan of sin and temptation to actually try and seek to pull you away from him, to pull you away from the salvation that he desires for you. And uh, as he says here, it's kind of interesting. So as, as, uh, as uh, well, Vicar, why don't you go ahead and keep reading there? Okay. But when some of them said, he casts out demons by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, while others, to test him, kept seeking from him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and a divided household falls. And if Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that I cast out demons by Beelzebul. And if I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. All right, let's stop there for a second. So one, one thing Jesus does here is kind of profound is he basically says there's two kingdoms here. There's his kingdom and there's everything else. Okay. Okay. And he says, talks about the kingdom of everything else is they're actually unified. There's a unified nature of of evil and wickedness. And I think that's really good. And I'll tell you how you can apply this, all right? Okay. Um, so, um, when you think of evil right now, what kind of what what really comes to mind worldwide? Mm, war, I suppose. Or like, right, like uh, what's going on like in Ukraine, Putin, right? I, I suppose people would say like Putin or like mm-hmm. figures of that such. Um, even like with, I mean, I would say uh, pop culturally, like horror movies and stuff. You know, like okay, you know, right, right. Right, uh, that's, so that's like how it's uh, imagined, or you know, that's how a lot of people, um, you mm-hmm. know, visualize it, or you know, like they right. see it as. And, and so, so what's interesting to think about of 
which I mean for me too, because like if like I believe in God, you know, and like I, I believe in demons and stuff. So like when I see like if I like see something like hor- like horror, and it might look almost in a sense cheesy, it's still like the, it still like gives you like that eerie like you know you shouldn't be like messing with that. messing with you know and like <laughs> there, so, like, there is like a demonic right, and then realm. it gives it yeah. gives like uh, then like because these CGI people and stuff they're like decently like they give you like a good imagery of like and then it it gives you this portrayal mm-hmm. that's like you know, you can visually like fear or whatever and stuff too in that sense, you know. Um, right. That's, well, that's well, what I, and part of it is, is art as a language. Yeah, that's true. Yep. And, and you know, like the horror. It's, it's also subjective too, mm-hmm. so it's how you. Right. So so as you, you think about all those, that evil and th- realize like, like whether it's war or wickedness or um, I think you, you kind of intimated like addictions. Yeah, addictions for sure. Certainly. Yeah. Right. How in a way they're they're kind of, all working together. And like, if you see like the war, like the attack on innocent lives in Ukraine. Hmm. Okay. And you, you, you really think about evil on full display in that setting where hospitals are getting blown up and schools mm-hmm. are getting blown up. And we collected a collection for uh, Christians over there, whether they're um, a Lutheran bishop who's seeking to help people mm-hmm. and he's trying to get body armor for his own pastors yeah, and, um, and helping refugees in the surrounding countries, you know? Right. Um, well, and then you also think about this, the um, civilians in those circumstances that are happening to shoot another human being just in order that... To protect themselves. To protect themselves. And then that other human being, they're only just coming in because of what this higher this hierarchy is, tell, is telling mm-hmm. them to do, you know, for their freedom, or, you know, like in that sense. Yeah. Towards- there you had this in the text, uh, in every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste and divided households falls. I mean, even... Mm-hmm. People are divided by evil mm-hmm. and so, in and, that realm. Yeah. And so what this does is, is then when you, you, you see that evil and you, you kind of comprehend that evil, and and we like to maybe think, well, that's a good thing that's not me, a good thing that's Vladimir Putin or the evil Russians or whatever the case may be. But then if you actually look at it in an honest way, mm-hmm. that that is what is in us and what we battle with us in us you know all those horrors and all that wickedness is what happens when our sinful side is taken to its logical conclusion and and so one thing i try and teach is when you, you see this type of thing the first thing before you point fingers at all these this wickedness and evil all around us is is to to first look at yourself right because um uh, you know, Vladimir Putin, he can't do it on himself. Yeah. If you look at Adolf Hitler, he couldn't do it by himself. He needed to change the hearts of people to turn it towards evil. And and the, and so when you hear these things, it it chal- it teaches us to look at our own sin, which is a uh, what Lent is too. We talk about the battle of good and evil, but it's that battle of good and evil that that is fought within us as well. And. Uh, it should really be an eye eye opener because, um, you know, even when you look at Jesus' death on the cross and and how horrible it is, you know, we like to think, well, if if I wasn't there, I would not have let that happen. When at the same time, you know, he died bearing our sins. Yeah, you know, and so um, like Judas as well too. You know, like everyone thinks that they wouldn't deny the Lord. You know. Like three times, yeah, you know, Peter or Peter, yeah, Peter, Peter yeah, Peter. and Judas, Judas was the one did that trade, yeah, betrayed him, yeah, betrayed him. but Peter, yeah, when he was, uh, no, I, I won't, I won't deny, you know, and then he does it three right. times, and every time, like, right, I mean, the way that it, that I, at least I translated it, it was that he every time that he he denied him or whatever, he was like, oh, like I'm denying him, and like he told me that I, it's like, but you know, right, and there's, I feel like there's also moments in life where you you may be making a decision that like you didn't first, you know, go through. Speak through with the Lord. I'll tell you what happens. You know what we do? What's that? Okay. And I maybe have mentioned this earlier is, is we don't like to, we don't like to close the door on sin. Yeah. Right. We say, well, yeah, I'm not going to do it, but I'll leave the door open for it. Right. (laughs) Right. That's true. Yeah. We want to, we want to hold, we don't, we want to say, I'll say no, but I'm not going to shut the door on the possibility of it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Whatever the temptation might be, you know? Um, but, but then is putting this together then when, when you think of it that way, it really then shows the seriousness, doesn't it? Of, 
of what that sin and what that temptation is actually trying to do for you, right? Mm-hmm. When, when you know that, that uh, you know, the weird thing about temptation in this context is that it, it comes promising good things, right? Yeah. One of the stupid sayings that Vicar hears me say sometimes is, temptation is by nature tempting. Yeah. Meaning, it appears good. It promises something good. And sometimes it even, there's a lot of sins nowadays that that that, that is given in the name of love, mm-hmm. right? This is what's loving. Is it loving or is it selfish? Do you, uh, so like with the with the demon, the the mute demon, yeah. do you think that came to that man that it, that it possessed? Do you think it came to him as like a, a temptation? And so, like, is there any like sort of backstories that, like as to like what that guy... We're not giving given a lot of backstory. Or is there it? anything like... But I would say this. I would say, um, and, and, and actually Jesus talks about this, is, is the fact that he's stronger. So yeah. the, the demon cannot really kind of possess something that Jesus has possessed. Okay, okay, yeah. So and he, he actually deals with this directly. He talks about the strong man coming mm-hmm. and driving out the weaker. Jesus is a strong man, more powerful than the okay. devil and the demon, and so so he drives them out. Right, okay. But then he also says something here. He says, uh, he talks about um, the strong man can drive someone out, but then some, uh, and then uh, and then he kind of leaves it, and then a more powerful demon comes back. Right. Okay. Right? Yeah. So so we talk about sin, we talk about temptation, we talk about devil and the demons, the power of evil, how it kind of has a unified effort to pull us away from God and to drive us to despair, to drive us in hatred toward others and all those things, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, the answer is not like fixing ourselves when it comes to these things, right? So the man who came with a demon that Jesus drove out, that made him mute. He was helpless to that demon. Yeah. That demon was way more powerful than he was. It controlled him. And and when we look at temptation, evil, sin, right, um, we are, in a way, it's not some, a battle we can win, mm. you know? Without the Lord. Right. And and really, not just without him, like he is the, the driving force. Right behind it he is the strong man you know when we we go to the freak factory thinking we're strong man you know i was gonna ask if that verse 21 was about you with the strong man (laughs) no (laughs) fully armed you know no word of god no the strong man isn't worried about tearing a peck at 350 (laughs) (laughs) the strong man doesn't have to count his macros (laughs) so that wasn't your confirmation (laughs) verse no okay (laughs) Um, so, so, uh, so that being said, then I think uh, let's put this, let's think about it a little bit more then. So, so when we struggle with temptation, when we struggle with wickedness and it is a real battle. I mean, if you're taking it seriously and we talked a little bit about that last time, because we caught you last time at a very raw time in your life. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. Where, or I, it seemed like at that time you were really wrestling Oh, I was. I, were, I really was. And, and I'm sure you could even see almost like de- demonic aspects of what you went. Would you like to say anything about that? Or, um, I feel like, I mean, especially with like the temptations of of like maybe necessarily like a like a youthful like a modern day youthful like mm-hmm. adolescent lifestyle like of you know a lot more social and stuff. Like I feel like I needed to disconnect from a lot of that stuff as it was bringing you know like uh negative and evil temptations you know like in like you know small aspects like mm-hmm. health wise or like um like a sleep schedule or like if i was like you know pr- priority priorities you know and stuff mm-hmm. and uh, i felt like cutting a lot of that stuff out and you know like just not necessarily like isolating but like just having like a routine you know a more of mm-hmm. a slower better prioritized lifestyle it there'd just be battles of like me wanting to you know like jump back to a lifestyle that we're like, oh, like, let's just go, go party on Friday, Saturday, or like, you know, like, mm-hmm. let's, but instead, like, it's just, there'd be the, not only the battle of like, um, or like feeling attacked as to wanting to do, mm-hmm. be tempted, but then there's also like attacks where like, you know, I could get down on myself or like feel like alone and stuff, you know, in that sense, mm-hmm. like, especially like, you know, like actually like when you, 
like those times where you almost feel like you're missing out. I don't, I don't necessarily feel like that anymore, but like, you know, that stuff can right. k- kind of fire at you. Like that was the transition that I felt like I needed to go through, mm-hmm. you know, after like a scenario or a situation like that, I just needed to slow down really. And then there was, there was a lot of those battles that I could, and this time around I could look, uh, I could look towards the Lord, you know, like look into the Bible, like for advice or like, mm-hmm. you know, talk to, I, I have a, a friend now and he'll like, and it's so awesome too, because like I connect to him like a, like a brother, honestly. And like, mm-hmm. uh, I got him like, um, you know, looking more into the Bible and stuff when he needs help. And, and like now he's sending me Bible verses and stuff, which is awesome. And like, so it's just nice to be able to like still have, you know, those, those social connections that I used to have, mm-hmm. but, but like in more of a, a positive sense and, and like involving the Lord, you know, you, you know, uh, you know, the way I see it a lot of times in youth is this way. Especially in, the, I would say, in the last fifteen or twenty years, and it seems to be intensifying, is the idea of, of like, self worth, of self value. Yeah, and I think that's the, um, the like social medias and right. stuff like that. You know, like, validation, like like validation for, for, for like even to use working out an example, right? Mm-hmm. There, there's one thing to like work out because it feels good and and you like how it it does, that that's great. But what happens when you 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 get some sort of a body dysmorphia thing and you're like working just to like, cause you're, yeah, for for your, your image and like image and validation your, and your self value and all those yeah. things, right? Yeah, being valued, validated. Right. Like, where I would say you work out because you know God gave you this body and and it, you know or, or to but to work out because you hate yourself is. Yeah. Right. And, and, uh, and I do think people like, uh, there have been times in the, in the, like at the wellness center where you have like teenage girls, like just doing glute exercises for an hour. Yeah. And it's like, where do they get that from? That they feel like they have to, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, 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 and so, and a lot of the things you see on social media aren't even honest. Mm-hmm. Like, like, uh, like if you are a fitness influencer, yeah, right. They're not natural. Yeah. They're right. not natty bro. Yeah. Right. And then, yeah. and then what are they doing? What are they doing it for then? You know, in the, in the general right. aspect. And like, like, go back to go back to like 15 year old Jace. You didn't under, necessarily understand that. And you probably thought, Oh yeah. Yeah. Why can't I look like. Right. Yeah. We, we all had like an image that we thought that we could. Right. Yeah. Stop, like, but we don't know. And if you work out enough and eat enough chicken and rice, it'll be no problem. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> right. We've all gone down the rabbit holes on YouTube. Right. And, you know, listen to the wrong people. And I think, but it, but it's, and this is where I'm going with this, is, is when you look at who truly values you, okay, um, and what your value is, the Bible says that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Right? When we don't even see value, Christ saw value. And when you think of, of all those people who claim to care about you, right? Uh, Jesus isn't what actually died for you, and and so when we think of of what our value is, well, we're we're purchased with the blood of Jesus. That's more valuable than any of those things, and um, and so and so that when you when you brought up the the younger people, that's that's really how I I kind of see that a little bit. In, yeah. In in uh, uh, because because uh. uh Suicides are going up, self harm mm-hmm. going up, all sorts of things, and I think yeah. that all kinds of comes comes out of of uh, not realizing that uh, you're not valuable by what you have or what you look like, how mm-hmm. smart you are, what you can do. You're valuable just because you are a unique creation of God that He loves, right? And I think, I think that's that's missing out and the flip side of that is is how we see value in other people then too yeah right do we value them because they're funny or because they have all these gifts it also teaches us to to see value in in the people who has none of those things that we might look for desire in person that a society would lift up do you um do you feel like with this now with modern day like everything like do you feel like the value of like heaven has has deplenished like for like that value of heaven for people like you know seeking to go to heaven and you know being with the lord i've i've heard i've just heard a take on that to where like now it's like if you want joy like you go to a chemical you know if you want like you uh 
mm-hmm. any happiness, you go to a chemical or if you want, you know what I'm saying? Right. I, I, will, I and, would say this. I would say um, particularly where we are in our country, we have a diminished understanding of, of heaven and salvation because um, we don't go through times where we actually fear death very often. We don't go through times where we're hungry, mm. um, and and we've we've kind of built up in a sense that our heaven is here on earth, and and heaven is just holding on to stuff here. So go back to Ukraine. You go to a place like that right now. There is a deeper understanding of heaven and salvation mm-hmm. that says you can take my life. Go ahead, but I know Jesus rose from the dead. I know I'm baptized in His name. And because I am, just like Jesus rise, I can rise. They tried to end Jesus by crucifying, and look what happened. Yeah. You know, I'm a child of God, so I can enter into things without fear because this life is not really my life. This is just a drop in the bucket compared to what I have in God's everlasting kingdom. And so to answer your question, I I think uh, in a way we've had it so good for so many years. I also see this from a generational point of view. Um, uh, older folks, they have a, a clear understanding of, of heaven and salvation, mm-hmm. right? And people who have gone through some very difficult times, you know, where they didn't know where they're making it, whether they went through a cancer treatment or something, you know, to, to say, to think in this way, well, if I wind up dying, uh, um, if I get better, what a good thing. If, if But if God calls me home, it's a win-win, mm-hmm. Right. And, and because we haven't gone through some really hard stuff and that we're really grappling with, um, and we don't live with the desperation, we, we, we think as though heaven is, is something here on earth that we can achieve and we can go for, and it really isn't. Yeah. And, and so, um, you know, I've talked to Christians in, from other countries. Um, I'm a good friends with a, a pastor in... Uh, in Kenya, okay, or pastors from Ethiopia, okay, and um, Christianity is growing like mad in places like that right now. Really, because um, one is they're not corrupted by kind of the modern thought where mm-hmm. where you know if you're from a third world country, you know God is ex- there is a God, yeah, and you know there's a God you need to answer. I mean, nowadays, like in modern day America, how many of the percentage say don't even think about that anymore? Yeah, right. Or like who would even like raise their hand if that was questioned, you know, like right. believe in God, you know? Right. In those places like Africa, they know it. Yeah. They're, they, they understand the battle of good and evil. And, um, but also, um, when I talk to these pastors, um, they also see the desperation in people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was talking to one pastor from Africa who who, uh, you know, when he goes to bed at night, there are um, orphans, like, outside of his home, like, eight, nine-year-old boys, like, hungry. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like, living in the the ditches. He's like, oh, I bring as many as I can. I can't just say no to them, right? If you try to say, say, you know, heaven is is something we can build here on earth, they're not going to see it. That's... That's completely foreign. If you point to, to you, you live a life of the cross right now, but you have something greater to look forward to. That that's so because we have not lived in desperation. I say yet because it's been quite a few years, yeah. right? The last couple, yeah. And I, I do think there is an opportunity for the church to see a reassert, reemergence because we are going to go through some more difficult times, right? Right. Um, but I think to answer your question, and the, and this is seen throughout the history of the church and actually the Old Testament, the children of Israel in the Old Testament, Vicar, what happened when times were good for them? They they got greedy, you know. They got greedy, right? They uh, they went after other gods, idols, you know, and and uh, pleasures of the flesh. And then after after some time. You know, then you know the Philistines would come, or or the Assyrians, or the Babylonians would come, and they'd be left. They'd be a bottom barrel, and then they'd they'd come back again. 
And and I I would say, when we talked to you last time, from a personal way, that's what you were going through, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like uh, sitting in jail and stuff. Like as you're explaining that, yeah, sitting in jail and being without certain freedoms necessarily that you're accustomed to, right. and this and that. Like it's not necessarily I was facing death, but I was facing like a, like a, a solitude that was. Just... You were facing, in a sense, a death of yourself. Like yeah. who am I? What am I doing? Yeah. Yeah, like an ego death or whatever you, if you right. consider it that, you know, but yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, as you were saying that, I mean, I wasn't anything to where like I was about to lose my dad, like lose my life, mm-hmm. but like, uh, yeah, it was, there wasn't necessarily a win win in that one because it was like I, like choosing the Lord was like the option, my only, like, I mean, mm-hmm. not to sound like, but that was my only option. It was the best option, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. so I mean, really, what else do you like when you're when you're in a mental time of need, like sitting locked up in like a, you know, in a box, mm-hmm. like, and I know about the Lord, you know, and I I believe in the Word and stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. It was it was like, I felt like uh, it was, I mean, it was like not only like my only option, but like it was the best option, like you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, like if that makes sense, right. Right, and you I could, didn't know what else. And to you do. could look, you could look at all those things that got you in that position, right? Mm-hmm. And you could say, those temptations claim to make my life better. They yeah. claim to make. And then look at where I was at, there, right? With certain right, and, and any of those situations that even brought that up about whether it's the substance or the people yeah. or anything like that, you know, you could ask yourself, they came as a as a you know as a, to be a light in my life, mm. but then you look, do they really care what what was best for me? Right, no. Yeah, it's kind of like also how you were saying earlier, like uh, the person that truly cares is the Lord, like even like when we sin, like the Lord. And then, you know, and then I was sitting Mm -hmm. in jail because of some sin. And the only person that still is seemed to care was like the Lord. I mean, I'm not saying that my parents, like my family, but, you know, when you're sitting in there and it's just you, like, that's when you could. Well, you know, you talk about parents. Uh, My my last sermon on Sunday, as I about the 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 woman whose daughter was possessed by a demon, right, mm-hmm. right, and and can you imagine what that would have been like in that household, right? I, right, yeah, right, desperate, and and as a mother, what did she do? She pleaded to to Christ on behalf of her daughter. My my daughter is possessed by a demon. Have mercy on me, heal her. I'm sure when you're imagine going through that. that, your parents probably had the same prayer. Yeah, am I wrong? Honestly, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Like what's happened? What's going on? Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, and and uh, you know your parents, you know, show, showing the love of Christ took care of you too. I mean, they're the ones that were more invested than anybody else as well in that situation. Right, right, definitely. So, boy, we got. We, I knew we would get deep with you. Right? Oh, I love I love getting <laughs> deep too, and I like I like listening to what you guys got to say too. And Carl, you make it real like uh, easy and interesting to follow along with and stuff as well. I've I've got a question, Belhagen, for you on the text. You bet. How would you render or understand this verse twenty four that says, "When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest, and finding none, it says, I will return to my house from which I came.'" You notice that phrase, waterless places? Okay. I was thinking baptism, like the unbaptized, but I, you know, that's how a vicar (laughs) thinks. Right. So when you're going to the seminary, whenever you you see water in the Bible, (laughs) it's always refreshed to to baptism. Okay. And not what it is. A lot of times it is. Okay. And then another thing is whenever they see bread or eating, it's always about the Lord's Supper. (laughs) But, but I think the point of it is is so that's a good point. We talked about wi- the wickedness and evil, right? This is a, this is this means that what you're going through right now is particularly an important time in your life. I believe it. Yeah, I believe because it, it says okay, the one demon is dri- driven out, and then he comes back, and how does he come back? Seven more in its place. Comes back stronger. Stronger. Yeah. Right, I guess that that too describes the whole concept of falling off the wagon. You know, at some point, you just never get back on, or you can't. It's possible. And your defenses, like, mm-hmm. it's it's kind of like 
I think the opposite of, um, I'll explain it this way. All right. So do you know how, when you get stronger, you know, your weaknesses, mm-hmm. right? And so like I talked about temptation, avoiding temptation, because you don't like to close the door on it. We like to leave the door open, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, I think part of that is too, um, when we're going through a bad time, we know all the things that will help and we don't want help. And we avoid those things that actually help us. Mm-hmm. And so, so we're like, if it's uh, addiction, like someone who struggles with, they, they know the kind of things that are going to challenge their addiction and, and they will do everything they can to avoid it. And I think just like, uh, so in a sense, uh, it's a self-destructive behavior. And, and, and because, oh, I learned from that, I know that had an impact on me. Well, I'm going to avoid that and yeah. allow the, the, this, the sinfulness and wickedness. So, for example, tell me if this has ever happened with you, all right? So, um, like, when you're going through a tough time, like, and, and your faith is struggled, and then, like, you hear about God, then it probably did it ever make you angry. Or you just want to avoid it or pretend like God doesn't exist because if he exists, uh, I'm in trouble. Yeah. Yep. I can definitely say that, especially like, because I've always, um, I've always been taught about the Lord, you know, it's like my upbringing, mm-hmm. the Lord has been involved, you know, like I was, I think I was baptized as like a baby. I was just recently baptized as well, but I was baptized when I was a child as a baby. Okay. Where were you baptized? Um, at a, I think I was Methodist in Osage. Okay. I believe. Um, cause that's where I, like, that's where I was, grew up when I was little, I was born in Mason. And sure. I lived in Osage, so I was five. So I'm pretty sure that, cause I'm pretty sure I've seen baby pictures of me and I was mm-hmm. getting baptized, you know. But, and then uh, where were you recently baptized? I was baptized out, out at the Baptist church okay. with my family. Um, I think two, three years ago, two years. Okay. Ago. It's been like, you know, sure. time flies, like it seems like, but, um, um, did you know, by the way, yeah. do you, do you know how, how, uh, the, the, ba- the Baptist church would understand baptism as opposed to us? Explain it to me. Break it down to me. I'll break it down to you. All right. I'll, and I'll use a text we just read, read, right? Okay. Right. So remember, who are we in that text? We are basically a, the weak vessel, right? Yep. Right? And, and sin and wickedness is more powerful than us, Right. And what's the one thing that can drive out all of that? The yeah. stronger man. Yeah, the stronger man. Who is? Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Right. That's how we understand baptism in, in this church. Okay. Is, is baptism is, in a sense, the coming of the strong man. Yeah, and that makes sense. Right? It makes sense. And so because, because it's the power of, of Christ and Jesus and his word that drives it out, Okay, Mm -hmm. Uh, that's why we will baptize a baby, because it's not what the baby can do or say. Yeah, Um, it's it's about what God does, and so, and so on on the Baptist side is is um, the way they understand baptism is, uh, and I want to be honest. Actually, I think I was baptized Lutheran when I was a baby. Okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I think I said Methodist earlier, but I'm pretty sure. uh, Okay, yeah. All right. Sorry, now that we no, were talking about it. Yeah, yeah. It. So so when you were baptized a second time, it was, um, in a sense, it was uh, stressing your decision, your obedience, mm-hmm. right? This is, when you were baptized, this is you accepting God and his plan. You see the difference? Yeah, yeah. D- 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 and, and it's, and yeah, well, I guess... That's kind of that's that's kind of how I did it too, especially because like uh, the opportunity was more brought up by my family, and then then I had time, then I had to think for myself and be like, do I want to mm-hmm. get baptized at this same time? Right, as and well? and then there's there's a value to for you to actually go through that process of mm-hmm. thinking, reevaluating. You know, yeah. I would I would say that um, uh, the the promise that Christ made when you were baptized the first times is an an effect. You know, you don't necessarily have mm-hmm. to be rebaptized, but yeah. I would say the process of you kind of examining yourself and saying, you know, I, I, God's word is important to me Mm -hmm. and his word is awesome. Yeah. Right. 
that that is a good process. But that's I guess that's how we would differ on baptism is right. is where we would say the baptism is is God's power coming to you, the strong man in a right. sense. Right. That's honestly too. Um, like it's it's interesting too because growing up, like uh, people would always ask, like, what what religion? Oh, are you Lutheran method? And like for me, like I mean, I went to a Lutheran church, but like I, the way that I always described it is like I just, I believe in Jesus Christ. You know, like I. And like when I look into the Bible for stuff, it's like I want to I want to know what the Lord has to say directly. You know, I don't want to hear it necessarily. I mean, but I also like to hear it like like if you translated it for me, you're you're more uh, you have more experience, you have more mm-hmm. like study. It's so like I would, and and then we also have a connection personally. So right. I know you're not lying to me. Right, like I could reach to you and and like listen, but like it's always been like I believe in like. I mean, and I'm not saying that each each of these like the Luther Methodists they don't believe in Jesus as well, but it was just like it seemed easier for me to explain it because I never really understood. I mean, now I'm kind of understanding. But mm-hmm. it, so like, it's like uh, that strong man, like that's that's like how I've like see the Lord, you know? Like you, you know what's kind of funny? It's part, part of our baptism service that we do mm-hmm. is I hold a baby and I say, depart, O unclean spirit, and make way for the Lord. Yeah. What, is, <laughs> what, what am I saying? I'm basically saying what our, our reading says, yeah. right? Yeah. You know? The strong man is here now, right? You know, devil and wickedness and all its evil. You don't own this child; Jesus does. He's coming. Yeah, that's awesome, right? That's yeah, powerful, actually. Like, and um, do you? Because do you do a lot of bap- um, baptism, baby baptisms? Like, often? yeah, yeah. So, like, I feel like, do you feel when you're doing them? Do you feel like that that power, like, uh, like um, the spiritual, like, of what you're doing, like for the the rich, like. Yeah, yeah, yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes, and the, you're baptizing I'm, a new soul for the Lord. Like. Yeah, not not in the way that you would expect, mm-hmm. but I do. Yeah, let me explain. Um, it's not like an like a an overwhelming like I'm feeling. Yeah, the you're, spirit. Ting- you're tingling. You know, like I'm, right, yeah, right. It's more of of uh, God's. This is what God's word says. You know, he says in Matthew 28, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. So I have the command of Christ that this is what I should be doing as a church, as a pastor, to yeah. make a disciple by baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then to to consider how the Bible talks about the washing away of sin and, and what his word does. And so it's the the... The power that I, I I hold on to is not in in an emotion, an mm-hmm. overwhelming feeling. It is more in in what God's word says and promises. The truth. The truth. Right. Okay. Right. Because because um um though the feeling can if it's if I if it was on a feeling that could be misled. Yeah, definitely. Right. Definitely. Like, I could attack your ego. You right. Know? Like partying is awesome. It feels makes you feel great, doesn't mm-hmm. it? Well, I'm, yeah. <laughs> Until until it doesn't <laughs> right, <laughs> right, and then that goes back to the t- temptation is by nature tempting, you know. Mm. Um, but that's why we we go to the to the Bible and say, okay, this is what God's word says. This is what He says about baptism. Yeah, this is what He says about the strong man. Yeah, overwhelming uh, the devil mm-hmm. in the life of the the believer, the Christian, or the the, the child, the infant child. Yeah. And, and if you uh, if you close the close the book and you open it back up to that same page, it'll still say the same thing, right? Like, like that. I I don't know. Like you kind of you kind of explained it to me like that one time where like what the Lord says, this is what the Lord says, and it doesn't change. You know, like even like when you start thinking, you know, thinking it a different way or like examining something, this is the way that the Lord right. Would, Who changed? Did God's yeah. word change? Yeah, yeah. Or did that, you? In that same in that same like that's what I was getting at with the close. It, but I'm sorry to right that now. And I, I didn't st- grab onto this right away, but you gave me a perfect segue. Okay, perfect. Okay? Yeah. Because you were talking about the difference between denominations, right? Mm-hmm. And you'd rather just you said, "Well, there's Methodist, Lutheran, Baptist," and and I just kind of want to go by what what Jesus says. Yeah. Right. So I brought a gift for you. Oh, you did! Wow. Yes. Yes. I'm excited. Oh, thank you. Oh, I thought you were going to hand him the microphone. No. <laughs> He, he's got a, a mic. Luther's small catechism. 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 All right. Okay. So let me explain. Ex- explanation too. I love. I love uh, the books that give you like a little brief explanation. But so yeah. so let me let me explain. What there, there's actually two parts. Okay. Okay. The first part of the catechism that I'll show you here. Yeah. 
appreciate it by the way thank you yeah no problem i i uh i i always i buy a bunch of these and i hand them out like candy if i'm if i can be honest that's awesome so um just not from a van right yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> an unmarked van I, I hope not. a church bus <laughs> <laughs> so like the first part is is really this this first part and there's six main parts all right and let me explain what it is so the, the first part is actually what Martin Luther, this is kind of part of what makes us Luther. Martin Luther wrote it. Okay. Okay. And what this does is, is um, if if I were to give you a Bible and just say, okay, what does Jesus say? Right? You, for example, the passage I just read to you, mm-hmm. like before you came in here and you were to look at it, your head would be swimming. Like, Right. Right. What does Jesus say? And you'd look at it and you'd read it and you'd go, I don't know. What does Jesus say? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? So much. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, um, and, and when we read a passage like that, um, kind of the way modern Christianity might look at it is they'll say, well, this is what it means to me. Right? So I could read, oh, this means to me this. And Vicar could read, this is what it means to me here. And you could read, this is what it means to me. Mm-hmm. But the, the problem is, you know how I, we men talked about how God's word doesn't change? Yeah. Yeah. So... There's got to be a, like an intended meaning that Jesus was actually saying, regardless of what it means to you. What was he actually right. saying? Right. Okay. And, and if I were to, to, to give the Bible to like a hundred different people and say, what does this say? You know, develop a, a religion based on what this says. Yeah. You'd have a hundred different religions. Right, right. The translation is like so, I feel like it's just because it's so in depth. And the fact that it, it's a big book, right? Yeah. And 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 so one part of the Bible, you have to square it up with other parts of the Bible. Like, so you could say, like, well, the Bible says this about the first commandment, and so I'm going to say this. And then someone says, well, doesn't it say this in Exodus chapter 20, this? Oh, yeah. So then there, I have to change. Mm-hmm. So there's some—so it takes kind of—it takes uh, not just one person to kind of delve through it, but a church— Mm-hmm. So it's have and it's, this is what we confess the Bible actually says, right, right, right. So if you were going to then kind of take the Bible, and I was going to teach it to someone so that they can understand, right? Yeah. Um, if I were just to say, "Here's the Bible, learn of Jesus," that's awfully hard. Right. And I'm sure even your own personal reading of the Bible, you're oh, like. Yeah. Oh, I, you you read Leviticus and you're like, what is going on? Like, yeah. I'm trying to have this to have meaning, but I, my head is swimming here, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, right. So what this does is, is it, it takes the teachings of the Bible, and it places in the hands of, of people in a way that they can understand. Yeah. So it's not it's we don't mean it to say this catechism part that it supersedes the Bible. We say this teaches the teachings of the Bible in a real organized way. Right. Okay. So, and also I think in, uh, what's also nice about this then gift here is, um, cause you're also, I feel like you're also easy to like talk to about, mm-hmm. um, and like, you know, we're, we're gym bros. So like, yeah, that's right. Um, I feel like looking cause like, like you said, like when looking for Jesus or like looking for the answer or trying to find the answer that you need for whatever you're dealing with in a certain, I feel like I could go to this and be able to look in there for, you know, whatever I'm looking for. Right. And, then, and then I'll have you then that yeah. be able to then break, discuss. I know and, this backwards and forwards. Yeah. Right. So that's <laughs> right. also, I, I love being able to have something that can um, connect, be able mm-hmm. to, because I'm, I'm like a hands-on kind of person. I like uh, more like explanation person to person. However, I also know how text, how important text is. Right. And, and, and I'll like, show you how, how helpful this is because it's got this, this wonderful, uh, like index in the back. Yeah. I'll get to that. Okay. Your mind will be blown. I promise. So it has six chief parts here. Okay. All right. And um, as we look, well, people might say, well, why do you have the catechism? Why don't you just give them the Bible? Well, first of all, the first section is on, is the 10 commandments. Okay. Uh, Well, where do you find the 10 commandments? It's right in the front of the Bible. It's in the Bible, right? It's Exodus chapter 20. Yeah. Okay. And, and. I'm sorry. I I honestly, like I've, I grew up on this, uh, this, it's like a sixth grade level Bible. Okay. But like in the beginning of it. So like when I say it's in the beginning of the Bible, oh, for me, yeah. it, it's a personal because like in that Bible, I could just flip it right Got open it. and I had them. Got so. it. Got it. So, so, but ultimately, so if you were to summarize what God commands 
in the Bible, I mean, you can find on every, every book you have a command, a Bible, right? Mm. But if you're going to kind of whittle those down in a way that you can teach easily, mm-hmm. all the, you can kind of sum up all the commands in, in what way? Well, well, didn't God give us the Ten Commandments, which is the summary of all those things? Yeah. So, so, so if you read the Bible and you say, well, I'm not sure what this means. What do I know that God is saying what is right and what is wrong? You'd say, well, it makes sense. The good place to start would be the Ten Commandments. Right. So the first section is the Ten Commandments. And, uh, and so each of the commandments says the, the, the commandment, and then uh, what does this mean, where we kind of basically describe what does it mean to have other gods? Uh, what does it mean to misuse the name of the Lord your God? And it just—that's nice, actually. And it just so so the the best way from to say, well, what do I know? What is right and wrong? Well, you have the Ten Commandments, which really is a, a, a nice summary of what God commands, mm-hmm. and then the explanation right there. Yeah. Okay. And so the next question is, um, well, well, then that's the commandments. Well, who exactly is God? How do we clarify that? Well, one thing the church has done from very early on is, uh, and I'm sure you've heard of it, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. And if you haven't, it's it's it is a creed that a creed means comes from the Latin credo, which means I believe, and um, and uh, it basically takes what the Bible says of who God is, and it kind of really clarifies it for us. So, for example, it talks about, I believe in God the Father, maker of heaven and earth. So when we think of God the Father, oh. Maker of heaven and earth. Right, Yeah. right. So so right there. That's the Apostle Creed. It, t- it takes a lot, yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, I, like, you say it and it connects, like, you know, like, I, like I've heard it, but I've never been fully. Mm-hmm. And, and what, what that's, and you say, well, why do we, we, why do we have the Creed when we have the Bible? Well, it kind of helps us focus a little bit. Yeah. When we think of the Father, he created me. Yeah. Right? And so the second part, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate. What is that? That's a description of Jesus. Basically, the highlights from the, from yeah. the, 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 gospel, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Who is it? Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, suffered, died, and was buried, rose again, descended into heaven, sits at the right hand of God. That basically takes what the Bible teaches— now you could you could find all this stuff by reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, yeah. but your head would be swimming. Well, there's this parable, there's this healing, there's that one time you drove out this demon, mm-hmm. and and well, what is it the most important things that I can really focus on that that Bible teaches? Well, yeah. from that aspect, yeah. And then the third part is the Holy Spirit. Who's the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, and that and it describes who the Holy Spirit is and how He works through the Church. And so, so the second part of the catechism is, is the first one, the Ten Commandments, describing what, what is right and wrong. Mm-hmm. Okay, and the second is a creed. Who, who is God? Okay, all right. And then, and then the third part is, well, what about another aspect of the Christian life is, and you've talked about it a little bit, is praying, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, what does the Bible teach about praying? Where would you go for that? Mm, which one is that? Uh, Psalms. Well, Psalms, that's a good answer. The yeah. Psalms is a, a very good Old Testament prayer book, yeah. right? Each it's Psalm like, uh, is a prayer. When you don't know necessarily what to be praying to the Lord, you can go look in Psalms, and, right? Yeah. Did we talk about that? I don't think so. Okay. We I'm might impressed. Have. Yeah. I'm impressed. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, and uh, another thing that that uh, really is a good prayer to... to I'm actually going to... Okay, we might have spoke about it last time. Someone's going to jump back in the in the first episode and <laughs> like, they did talk about it. And yeah. you, just, you just lied right there. So <laughs> we might have, but like I do, I did hear that from someone. It might have been you. Okay. It's just in my uh, my catalog up here. So That's right. Th- thumbing through the catalog. Yep, yep. All right. So we have here the Lord's Prayer. Okay. Our Father who art in, in heaven. heaven. I'll be thy name. Yeah. So where do we get the Lord's Prayer from? I know this one. The Lord's Prayer. Who taught us the Lord's Prayer? The Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but it isn't it, what book is it in? I'm sorry. It's like, in Matthew. It's in Matthew, okay. It's uh, in the Sermon of the Mount in Matthew. Okay. Um, yeah. uh, chapter, chapter six. six. Chapter, like <clears throat> halfway through six. chapter six. Yep. Right? Yep. So 
So I think, okay, prayer is an important part. Where's the best place to learn about prayer? Well, Jesus taught us the Lord's Prayer. So let's talk about what the Lord's Prayer means. And so now as you read Scripture, you have you have this context of understanding prayer. Mm-hmm. And when you see prayer, is all, you can understand prayer. What does it mean when I pray our Father? What does it mean deliver me from evil? What does it mean lead me not into temptation? Yeah. Well, that way, when you pray the Lord's Prayer, it gives you kind of a basis to springboard Okay. Yeah. What right. what each right. What each so for phrase. example, give us this day our daily bread in the Lord's Prayer. Right? It's a it's it's a one, it teaches us that that all that we need comes from God. If you're asking God for your daily bread, mm-hmm. you realize it comes from him. Right? Yep. And then you also then realize it's not just daily bread, it's a reference to everything that I need to support my body and life. Yeah. And so so fundamental to faith is prayer. Well, what do I learn by prayer? How can I find what the Bible says in the Lord's Prayer? Why don't we start by understanding the Lord's Prayer? Exactly, yeah. And then that you're saying that's in here? That's that's the that's third, the that's the third, third third part. Awesome. All right. And then uh the fourth part is um uh on baptism. Okay? It's touching every it's touching all Right. The, yeah. Right. Well, what does the Bible say about baptism? What is baptism? And so, um, baptism, in a sense, is the entry, of, you know, into the church, into the family of God. Well, how does that happen? Where does the power come from? How does water do something amazing like that? Um, what does baptism mean for me? And uh, and you'll find too, as you look at that, not only does it describe it, it 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 has quotes from from the Bible too to kind of show yeah. it, right? Okay, and it'll. Like like how you're saying, you just take the Bible and what does God say? Like, but you're saying in parts of the Bible, there's like, you know, in Mark and then over here in Psalms or whatever, you know, like it's all over. But like with this, then it gives you, it gives you a of, framework, a really yeah, strong framework that's awesome. to help you really understand the essentials and, and place it. Because if you just say, oh, well, I just read the Bible, there, it, your head's going to be swimming. Right. You know, um, and I believe the power of the Bible. We should be reading the Bible. Right. Certainly. Right, but um, but like when you're reading a passage, like are you going to understand what Revelation might say about it as opposed to right. James or as opposed to Ecclesiastes? Right, right, exactly, yeah. Right, um, it's like a dirty bulk. <laughs> right, <laughs> you've been sitting on that for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just doing my part. <laughs> That's right. I've been I've been main gaining. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And then um the next part is confession. Okay. Now what this really kind of really not kind of really does is explain forgiveness. It explains how repentance, like helping me understand what it really means to be sorry for my sin, what it means that that God forgives me. How does that process look like? How does God's forgiveness, how do I, is that pronounced in a way that I can trust and believe? It's, it's kind of like this. Maybe we talked about this last time. Um, uh, it, it, it's not something, when you talk about forgiveness, something you can just kind of go by how I feel, right? right. Does God forgive me? Well, I'm going to just kind of page through the Bible and try and figure this out. Yeah. Um, would this explain? Which isn't easy. Like believe me, I've done I've done that. Before. Right, Just page through. Sounds like you need it. Yeah, yeah. You need a catechism. Um, uh, what it does is it, it it talks about really how from God's word and from the church that it's good to hear a voice outside of yourself telling you that your sins are forgiven. Okay. You know, it's kind of like the difference between doctoring yourself mm-hmm. and going to a doctor. Yeah. Right. Sometimes you just got to be told this is what's going on right right with by the person that has a little bit more because i'll tell you why because everyone will will justify themselves enough that they'll find reasons why they're they're on god's good side Mm -hmm. everyone will will find a way yeah but but you need someone to either tell you dude you're not repentant Mm -hmm. you know you you're kind of rejecting what God's word says. Yeah. With an honest with the authority of God himself to say that. Right, right. Like I'm going to be honest with you. You know, you you um 
are refusing to repent of your sin or, you know, which is hard. <laughs> yeah. But what would love demand? Like, if you're drowning, hey, you're drowning, yeah. right? Yeah. Let me help you. Yeah, a little hard love. In a right. Sense, yeah. Truth. Right. And, and so it really teaches us that it comes from a voice outside of ourselves to know these things, mm -hmm. from the church and from the pastor and from God's word to say, this is what, what, what Jesus actually has to say. And then what it does is it, it then points us to say, this is how you, when, I, when you're told in this context that your sin is forgiven, it's as if Jesus himself is saying those words. That's pretty powerful. Yeah. So, so when you talk about what the, the feeling that I have like a baptism or per, telling to someone that their sins are forgiven as their pastor, that's a, that's a really good place to start. Definitely. So and that that's and and that way we call it uh, confession. Well, you mean confession, absolution, absolution is is. Uh, by the way, I had someone we had to ask the pastor once. Maybe I told you this. And, no. Nope. Uh, and uh, absolution is to be absolved of your sins, right? Okay. And someone was wondering about absolution because they were they wanted to to get abs. <laughs> <laughs> they thought we were offering abs solution. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> now you'll remember it, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> right. And then, um, and so uh, the confession and absolution really kind of draws that out and helps us understand, like, where do I stand before God and how can I know? And, and like I said earlier, where does this come from? And there are some very succinct Bible passages that it points to, to kind of clarify and understand as you read the rest of the Bible. And then the, the last one is the sacrament of the altar. And uh, what we mean when we talk about the Lord's Supper, because in the Lutheran Church, that, that is one of the other fundamental things that we understand. So um, when the night before Jesus died, his last will and testament, so to speak, this is when he instituted the Lord's Supper, and he said, this is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And then he said, this... This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Okay? And then he said, do this often in remembrance of me. What he's really essentially doing there is he's saying, okay, I'm going to be I'm going to be leaving you. Right? You will no longer I mean, you'll see me after the resurrection for a short time, but when you go after I'm ascended into heaven, um uh people are going to need to encounter me. People are going to need to encounter me in their my own body and blood, right? right. So even as he's leaving, he's, he, he institutes a supper to say, okay, now when you do this, you're giving them my body that, for, that was broken for them, that was paid for that on the cross. You're giving them the cup of my blood for the forgiveness of their sins. So, so, so that is, in like, it's kind of like baptism in this way. It's like the strong man. Meaning, I come to the Lord's Supper broken in my sin, needing forgiveness. How do I know I'm forgiven? Well, if you're receiving the strong man in the very body and blood of Jesus according to Christ's own promise, mm -hmm. you may not feel forgiven that day. But what does Jesus say? He said you're forgiven. Right, right. So, and, and so this delineates, un provides an understanding of uh, the Lord's Supper. And like I said... If you look here, the, the, the first part is only goes to about, about page 30. And then the rest is a further explanation of it. Okay. Okay? And so this is one part I think you'll really like. So, so you see the list of topics there? Yeah. Oh, that's nice, too. And it gives you the... Um... What, it gives you the number that you see is a question number. Okay. Yeah, not page number. Not a page number, oh. question number. So you, you just pick one once. Just pick one that appeals to you. Um, have any of those? Let's see. How about uh, um, blasphemy? Okay. Blasphemy. So go to the question number. 28. 28. Uh -huh. So if you go... See, the red are the question numbers. Okay. So go to question number 28. Oh, Okay. 28 here. Second Peter 3, 15 and 16. Our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you according to the wisdom given him, as he does in all his letters when he speaks in them of these matters. 
there are some things in them that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction as they do the other scriptures. Okay, so if you look, look at the question though first. What is a question? See, the, it refers to a question. 28. My bad. Right. What is cursing by God's name? Do you want me to go Yeah, on? go ahead. Go <laughs> ahead. See if that answer helps you understand blasphemy. Okay. Because blasphemy is honestly, I, I mean, I kind of understand it now, but um, I've heard, I've heard the term thrown speaking, around. You speaking know. on behalf of God when you don't, in a sense, or yeah, like making, pretty much making up, right, right, isn't it? Making right. up like some stuff that, but using the Lord as right, right. So what it does is, is it takes a question, right? Okay. It gives an answer, and then it lifts some Bible passages on why. Yep, it gives you a Bible narrative, down right here too. So it, so it answers the question. It doesn't, and you know how it doesn't say, "Don't just take this line for it." This isn't. It says, "Yeah, this is how we know." Here's some Bible passages and some Bible stories and narratives that really bear this in mind. This, these Bible passages will help you understand blasphemy, and these Bible accounts will help yeah. you understand. And so, so to me, that, that's perfect for you as you come come up with questions. What, is. what does the Bible say about this? What does it say about marriage? What does it say about baptism? That's actually, I feel like that's a lot uh, more helpful when it gives you questions like that, you know, to where like it gives you these, um, the index or whatever, the table of context to give you the word. And mm-hmm. then instead of it just shooting you to a passage that you just, that it's up to you then to translate, uh-huh. it almost gives you like, immediately it gives you the question that like, it gives you a, like for me, like blasphemy or whatever that I just mm-hmm. selected. And then it directs me to a question and it's like, well, yeah, that is kind of why, why I'm looking up blasphemy. And then. And then there, and then it answers, that. and then it basically says, "Well, don't take, was, just take my word page. for it." It was the whole page too, and like it was, gave me two narratives, and uh-huh. like and also in bold um, verses and chapters to right go to. Which and and so do you see how that that can help inform mm-hmm. your Bible reading? Yeah, definitely. Right, you can say it well, rather than just so rather than just what do I read and how can I understand it? It says, "Well, maybe I can understand blasphemy by reading this passage in Scripture." So, yeah, this is awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Did you, did you want to point out anything else in here? No, no. Oh, I think uh, I think we're, we're good. I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. Can I write my name in it? Is it yeah. Right? All right. Sweet. sweet. Yeah. Awesome. Because I got a I got actually have a shelf that's starting to develop, and I got like a got a brand new Bible. Mm-hmm. Um. Um. Now I got the catechism. Right. So, so yeah, that'll give you a great great yeah. framework right. to help you be a little bit more. As, as you go through all these questions that I think you're still wrestling with, right? Mm-hmm. To, to narrow it down, to focus. What is it that I really need? Because I, I, I do sense that sometimes you're a deep thinker, but it's like splattering all over the place. Yep. It's like all these different thoughts and you can't make yeah, sense I of it. Yeah, I have a lot of, uh, I feel like I, I have like six or seven different perspectives on one thing. I'm not saying that I disagree with all of them, but like right. you said, the splatter, that it gives a splatter effect to where like... Um, yeah, I, I don't necessarily marry a. I don't marry an idea or, or like marry a, um, a way of perceiving it. Which I feel like this, mm-hmm. in that sense, it'll give me the. It'll give me more of a direct, um, um, outlook on it. You know, or or, mm-hmm. or perspective. Like I said, narrows it narrows my perspective on it. Which which honestly, in translation and like, um, like looking into the Bible and trying to translate it myself, um. It's easier, like how you were saying earlier, how we we kind of put our way, we put our mind into the. Make right. sure that we're on the Lord's good side, you know, and then I, if I'm translating something and I get six different ones and I'm going to pick like the two translations that I'm sort of liking a little bit more, than the other one, <laughs> you know, to, to, right. to get me, to get me going. <laughs> the ones that leave you, that allow you to leave the door cracked. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but no, I think this will definitely, and I need something like this too. You know, I feel like we all honestly need something that's going to more pinpoint us mm-hmm. and, and tell us the, you know, the, the blunt truth, you know. And, and, and also that, that, can be a good way of helping you pray in yeah. this way. Yeah. Um, that uh, um, you'll learn something and you'll have like a teaching that it, it has. You say, oh, that's a good point. And you could say, you know, Lord Jesus, you teach me in your word uh, that your name is holy, that your word is holy, that I never veer or blaspheme your name. Yeah. And then you say, well, then help me to to remember your name in its preciousness, mm-hmm. and help me to, to, uh, for your word, uh, to have its way in my thinking and my life. Yeah, you see how you can give take me those. The, give me the direct, 
direct and then so you, that i'm not blaspheming you right know, so, right so you, you know? take the truths that you learn and because faith by nature is a struggle mm-hmm. it it, it, what, it what, seeks to change us yeah you ask for that change in yeah the would that be a sense of uh like blasphemy like if you mistranslated or like you're living off of a separate like your own perspective mm-hmm. on it is that would that be yeah. in a sense I, blasphemy? I got the perfect like, i got the perfect answer yeah okay open your catechism okay all right, to the Lord's Prayer section, which is uh, the very first part, right? 18. All right. I was just waiting for you. You told me, you told me right? that you had this thing down in the back of your hand. Well, not so much the page Okay, numbers. not. Okay, I'm go to the, grief. I'm giving you grief. the hallowed be thy name. Okay, hallowed be thy name. Go ahead and read that. What does this mean? That yeah, how, so hallowed be thy name is a part of the, the Lord's Prayer that Jesus taught us, mm-hmm. right? First petition. Yeah. Right? And so what does this mean? When you pray this, what does it mean? Go ahead and read that part. God's name is certainly holy in itself, but we pray in this petition that it may be kept holy among us also. Right? And the next, so so we we're praying here that God's name is kept holy. In yeah. other words, that we don't blaspheme. Okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. So read the next the answer, the next question then. How is God's name kept holy? God's name is kept holy when the word of God is taught in its truth and purity, and we, as the children of God, also lead holy lives according to it. Help us to do this, dear Father in heaven. But anyone who teaches our lives contrary to God's word profanes the name of God among us. Protect us from this, Heavenly Father. Yeah. Right there, right? Yeah. And you could tie that to our text today. The last verse, 28, says, Blessed, or but he said, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Yeah. So Awesome. Well, our time is up. Well, that's unfortunate, but my Sprite's gone too, so <laughs> might be perfect timing. Yeah, we had to spring for the, the small Sprites for you. Sorry, Chase. Yeah, come on. You know I'm you know I'm a, like a 12-ounce kind of guy, you know? Six. Right, but th- there's zero protein in it. I was actually looking <laughs> out for true. you. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, thank you. I want to thank you. I, I enjoyed this. Yeah. F- flew by. We were probably like an hour and a half in, so. Wow, wow, yeah. It's it does after fly. five. Yeah, I appreciate it too. And I was like honestly a little um, nervous before I came in because like, um, well, I mean, I'm not, I'm not in, I'm not podcasting a lot. So right. like, like, and also with the splatter, right? So right. Like I'm, I'm already splattering a whole. Right. I tried to make it feel like we're just <laughs> yeah. sitting around the table. It's awesome. Yeah. No. So. no. See, I've already, I've already ran this same podcast through my head like six or seven times since we started planning it, you know? So like right. I've had so many multiple different ideas and it's just, <laughs> it's just nice to finally get a concrete episode number two. Yeah. Uh, well, like we'll, for us. We'll have, we'll have to have you back again. If yeah. listeners, if you'd like to you have any questions for Jace. Yeah. If you have any questions for right. me. They can get, you can get a hold of us at, uh, I forgot to write down your card, Vicar. <laughs> you can email us at feedback at clericalheirs.org, or you can um, find us on Facebook. We're not really good with social media. We don't have a lot of interaction with Facebook or Twitter, but we have them. Yeah, okay. Um, just let us know. We'll, we'll, we'll get a hold of Jason. We'll get these answered. Awesome. Yeah, well, I get appreciate him bef- Get him before the, the, the ground thaws. So that- yeah, yeah. <laughs> You got a couple weeks yet, but uh, I might then. Otherwise, we might have to squeeze in a weekend set. Go there you go. But no, I appreciated you having me on, and uh, I like I. Well, you guys came to me at the gym and said uh, fans are wanting it. So yeah, you know, yeah, we got some emails. People yeah, wanting. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So here I am. I'm back. So yeah, let me know if you want me back. And like yeah, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, we'd love to have you. It's it, it's been fun. So yeah, it is very fun. All right, that concludes our episode. I'm Bullhagen. I'm Vicker. And I'm Jace. And may your strong man. Drive out the week. Thank you for joining us. This podcast is available on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever else you get your podcasts. Questions, thoughts, concerns? You can contact us on Facebook at facebook.com slash clerical heirs podcast, on Twitter at clerical heirs P for podcast, or email us at feedback at clerical heirs.org. Thanks for listening to clerical heirs. See you next time.